So pay the theatres the respect that they are due by knowing what the output is. And then you'll be taken more seriously. Okay? It's like any job application. Know who you're talking to. And, you know, see the work. Go to those theatres. Don't just write to the bush. Go and see three shows. Get a smell of what they're after and talk to people there. Build up relationships slowly. Now, if you do that, you stand a better chance of being heard. But a critical element within all this is you must regard yourself not simply as artists, although you must also really believe that, you are also one person businesses, which is why knowledge of the marketplace is important and also an awareness of who does what. Because if you take part in workshops at the Royal Court or you get hooked up with Soho or Hampstead or any of these new writing houses, you start to develop a sense of the house style, but also you get to talk to directors and actors. And in a way, as playwrights, you need to get out of your writing rooms and smell the rehearsal space. You need to get to know people. You need to start to speak the language. You need a bubble to develop a sense of writing for a three-dimensional space. Now, when I was a literary manager, and I have worked in television too, um, when I was in a theater, I'd always be sent television scripts. When I was in television, I used to get sent theater scripts, and it was just bonkers. When people write, they often write what they think is theatre, but actually the way it cuts from scene to scene, it's clearly film or telly. You need to know how to get your character on and off stage. You need to build time into that process. You need to think profoundly about the relationship with the audience. Where do you want them sitting? Do you want them around the whole action? Do you want them on stage? Where do you want these people? Don't just leave that to the director. Have a concept. Um, Think very carefully about the space you want to occupy. This play, Sabbath, is for four people for a studio, right? Lady of Burma is a one-woman show. Um, the play I'm writing about the Olympics is, originally, it was uh, 30 actors and a brass band. Well, there's no way I can get the money for that, so now it's six actors and no brass band. So, you need to be flexible if you want to see your stuff put on and make it work. Live in the future. Don't predict this wonderful career for yourselves. Believe that it might happen, but make the work. Live in the moment. Kevin Spacey once said very memorably, I wasn't in the room with him sadly, I just read this. Um, my friend Kevin. He said, uh, working with some young actors, he was at the Old Vic doing a play, right? Theatre piece. And the young actors didn't want to talk about the play they were doing. They just want to say, oh, you know, movies, how do you, Mr. Spacey, could you get me in your next movie? And Spacey just blew a gasket and said, you are making a play. All that matters is this work, this, this, and only this. And I think that's true too, of everything you do. Live in that moment, create the best, most exciting work you can, and you don't know where it will take you. I would say that too much theatre writing is too dialogue heavy. I would say that you should absolutely think about subtext and, and the fact that silence and image can contain huge amounts of meaning. The, I work a lot in radio, or have done, and that's even worse in radio, because writers don't trust the medium to carry subtext. Believe me, if you have good actors, you can create work without having this huge amount of exposition or whatever it might be. Um, no, I suppose what I'm trying to get at is writing for a three-dimensional space involves bodies in a physical space, relationships with audiences, but above all else, significant images. I believe theatre is a very intensely poetic medium, and I don't just mean you know, using, as it were, flowery language. I mean the way you construct a story. It's it's very fluid, like a dream. If I say to you, in my hand, I have a, a spear which represents a thousand men slaughtered on the battlefield, and then I put ten spears on the ground, uh, a writer did this, it became an intensely moving moment. Those spears really were invested by the audience with that kind of pain. So. You know, the theatre is this kind of space. It's a space of dreaming and images, um, and it's a place where if you say it is, it is. Shakespeare gives you the really best example. Henry V, those of you who know it, invites the audience to, as it were, meet him halfway to create all the sets and so on and so forth. One great thing about playwriting, as opposed to quite, you know, novelists, for example, is that you, if you're going to work in the theatre, you've got to work with other people. And for me, the best moment of all is working in a rehearsal space with actors. That beats everything. And then, of course, you see the show, and it's just amazing, because it's a collaborative act. And you hand your work over, you give your work to someone else, and they bring it to life. It, it's one of those experiences which I really hope you 
If you haven't had it already, I hope you will have it fairly soon. So, to survive, you mustn't be precious. Always have that personal project going, that thing that you're passionate about. But if you can get other work, which is writing work, you should definitely consider it, okay? First of all, I would say personally, and there will be many people here who might disagree, never do anything in order to get something else, right? Do something because you really believe in it. You really want that play to go on. And the only reason you want the agent to see it is because it's worth that person's while coming to see your work, okay? Um, I am convinced if I'd done the Lady of Burma to make money, no one would have touched it because the karma, if I can use that word, the spirit would have been wrong. Now, many people may say, I'm just being idealistic, but I really, really believe you have to retain an element of real idealism in your work, real passion for why you want to be a writer. But rejection is something you're going to have to deal with. If you're a performer, some of you may be performers here as well, or as a writer, it's going to happen. Don't let it eat away at your self-confidence. For every theatre that says no, there may be one still that you haven't contacted who may say yes. And they may not say yes immediately, it might take a while. Don't give away your power to other people. Don't expect things from other people. Get on with the next project. Launch your play 